Uh, all right, so uh, how are we feeling confidence-wise? You guys still – because you guys were all over the Eagles – Last week, we still Jeez. we still riding the Philly train all the way to this week so far. I mean, I know we got several days to to firm up yeah, our can opinions we get a on slow this game. Build? Can we get a slow build? Just saying, like, how do you feel like it t- taking the temperature early uh, on? In the I week? feel like the Eagles are going to smash the <laughs> Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> so the, really? there's your slow. That's build? what I feel. Oh, huh. what do you think? Huh. What do you guys think? I, I, I'm more I'm more torn. I, I honestly like. I mean, obviously, I played for the Chiefs for a year. Like, just obviously love. My, my time with like that ownership group, the people there, like it's a great place. So, I mean, my heart is definitely pulling for KC. Um, I do. I, I said it last week. You know, I feel like kind of not the extent that Philly's going to smash them like Lavar does, but I kind of feel like it. It will. I guess if you go back to that Tampa KC Super Bowl, that was what it was. I mean, it was what thirty one nine. Yeah. Yeah. So I I I, I kind of look at it and feel like the pass rush. Um, the defense, the ability for Philly to run the football, their offensive line's been so good. I just feel like if there's one advantage, like distinct advantage between the two rosters, so front, it would be the defensive fronts and offensive front. Like I, I think that's the one thing I keep going back on and going, Philly's better on, on both. And that's not saying that like Casey's bad on their offensive line. They probably have a top ten off. They, I shouldn't say probably. They do have a top ten offensive line. And Philly, or excuse me, KC on defense, like Chris Jones is played as the best interior defensive tackle this year. Mm-hmm. So they, they've got some stars. Frank Clark's played well in the playoffs. You know, he always does. So I, I, I'm, I'm torn. I think, it, I think it'll be a close game. I, I really do. Um, but I still see, like, envision, like, kind of the pass rush and all that defense getting to getting to, uh, KC. I like Kansas City, and the more the game, the closer the game gets, the worse I feel about it. Because hmm. you brought up the Tampa, uh, uh, Tampa KC Super Bowl. I'm getting a Denver, JPP. Denver, oh. Seattle vibe. Oh, because the, six times the quarterback that's led but, the league in passing. But Seattle won that game, right? Yeah, but I'm saying on the Denver – like, I love Denver going to that yeah, game, and then Denver. I just kept live betting yeah. it and losing my ass while the game was yeah. going on wow. because I just couldn't figure out, what, why is this happening? Denver's that. the better team. Was yeah. that the one where you did it, like, literally up until the end of the game? Yeah, somehow, and you one, one in 17. Yeah, one mm. in 17. Dang. Yeah, that's a. You was happy for that one though, wasn't you? Oh hell yeah! Yeah, you got that <laughs> one. You was like, all right, here we go. It, the, the line was so a ad, it was so astronomical at the end. I said, there's no way they're going to keep running it up, and and Seattle kind of you know uh-huh. sort of cakewalked kept, into the yeah. uh, in, in, to the final. But yeah, that was an awful. I just that's what I'm envisioning right now because this is the seventh time a quarterback who led the league in passing has been in the Super Bowl. The previous six all lost. Every single one of them. I just wonder how healthy KC can get by Super Bowl. Like, how healthy will their receiving core be? You know, how how many weapons, how healthy will Patrick Mahomes be? And I'm sure that will be a story that continues to play out is where is his health in regards to, to hitting into the game. I just I just think they ran out of gas against Cincinnati. And and outside of some some calls you know, and, and we could say questionable. I don't really care to call it questionable or not at this point. It happened. It's over. But you can say that the game was in some type of way altered. Are, are Bengals fans still crying, by the way? Do we have an update? I don't know Bengals if they're still – are they still crying? Lee? God, I don't I don't man. know. But I, B- Bitch I, and moan. Bitch and moan. But they were, we got cheated. They were the better that. team. I mean, I, I know you can't say they were the better team because they lost. But that was that was the better team. On that field, I just didn't think that. K- I don't. I still don't know how KC got out of that game, but they did. And and you know what? For what it's worth, the same exact thing that I'm going to say right right now about them getting out of that game will be the same exact thing I'd say if Kansas City gets out of this game and wins the Super Bowl. You have to put Patrick Mahomes and goat conversation to a different capacity if he's able to have a good game in this Super Bowl. Yeah. It solidifies itself. I, I mean, in so many ways, because this is a daunting task for for this offense, considering, you know, what, what they're going up against and what they have coming into it. You know, what's interesting about Mahomes. If you actually look at his two Super Bowl appearances. They're not he, the greatest. Yeah, he didn't. Not the greatest. Like, he played, like, what, a, 
half a quarter well, and that was the the win against San Francisco. But against Tampa, San Fran he was running him. for his life. San Fran had him until yeah. until they picked it up in the second half. You so know, he a has couple big plays. he has struggled in the Super Bowl. So this will be you know third time, and and then he gets to go against the Eagles defense and and Philly and but to and Q's point to it. Q's point though the defense has played like they probably put their best game uh, together this last game, and if you want to see. You know, if you want to have confidence, you want to see your defense play at the level that they just played at. I mean, Spags had them ready to go. Their their game plan looked looked sound, and and it gave them the opportunity to stay um, close enough in the game where you know that they were able to get into the the, the scoring position to win the game um, the way that they did. So. I just don't know that they'll have enough defense. If the, if they do show up, that's going to be the difference for me in the game. But I just don't know if they're going to have enough defense to do that for four quarters against the balance that, that Philadelphia is bringing into the game. Brady, were yeah, you – it's, it's almost like Miles Sanders has flown under the radar. Like the guy's rushed for, what, 1,200 yards this year. He's a, he's as solid of a back as it gets. Like Boston Scott's had his moments. Kenneth Gainwell like can, can – you know, pitch in as far as in the passing attack and also adding some balance there. Like, they are a tough, tough out. Um, just, just with the scheme, like the way they, you know, the, the zone read, the quarterback run game, not being able to play as much man because Hurts will take off Hurts with his legs. I mean, Steve Spagnuolo is going to pressure. It's what he does. It's just going to be interesting to see how much he elects to do that because you do have a quarterback who's in his first Super Bowl with Hurts. And you do have two rookie. I mean, your your entire secondary are babies. I mean, you got Brian Cook, who's a rookie at safety, but the quarterbacks are, are young rookies. Like they got some really, really young players. You know, Snead was banged up. I mean, I, we'll see what the injury report looks like as they move forward. But I mean, if you want a pressure, that's great. But you better have the secondary to be able to cover it down and back back that up. And they've got some inexperience there. And it's, and it's not a bad thing. It's just you know we'll see. If it's you know if those guys step up, or if they end up getting exposed. Brady, were you in KC when Nick Sirianni was there? I was. He was a wide receivers coach. Oh, okay, yeah. I didn't realize that he left KC when Andy Reid came in and let him go. Hmm. So maybe a well, little oh. Sirianni yeah, revenge. Oh, I didn't know that was. An I, I don't angle. know if it's so much that. I mean, when Andy Reid came in, there were some contracts that turned over, some that just weren't renewed. Kind of one of those deals. So I don't know the specifics of it. Um, but he ain't bringing back. Sure. Well, I, you know, again, the, no one was brought back. Mm. So, I mean, there, there's that. Mm. I, I don't even know if they, they kept on the entire strength staff. Like, mm. you know, they kind of moved on from, like, everyone, everyone. I will use that as motivation. Yeah. Uh, I, for I, right or for wrong, I'm going to use that. Yeah. I'm going to find me some motivation. I, I heard from a source that when Andy Reid got there, he pulled Nick Sirianni aside. He looked him in the eyes and he said, Sirianni, you're fired. Far. And then sent his how, ass back. How did it go? You're fired. Far. Yeah, that's what he said. One more time. You guys are really going to have to entertain yourselves there. Right? One more time. <laughs> well, you have no idea, Q. You have no idea. Well, I am my, I am my own up? best performer, by the way. Hey, you know? I, this looks like one of the concerts I used to play. I'm claim. my private dancer. <laughs> dancer. Dancer for my own money. <laughs> I'm telling you, his voice. I'm most underrated voice is Brady Quinn. I'm telling you, you man. Lying. He's got. You, you hit an octave. I think you found oh, a real talent. 